There are the videos which claim that Beyblade started in 1999. Well, they're wrong. Heck, some people think that it started with Metal Fusion. <laughs> Spin Top Battles didn't begin with Beyblades. These are just a modern ripoff of an older kind of toy, which was itself a ripoff of a religious tool, which itself is an ancient game from Japan, which some people actually believe came from China originally. Yeah, it's not so simple as you thought, right? Let me explain. You may know of the story about the first season of Beyblade, but the story doesn't start there. And you may be wrong about the person who created Beyblades, but I'll get to that in a moment. Did you know that Spin Tops and Battling Tops games are as old as the pyramids themselves? Now, you may be a smartass that knows why Spin Tops spin. I mean, is it centrifugal, centripetal force? Look, I don't know. But in this video, we'll not only take a look at the Spin Top religion. Yes, you heard that right. We'll also see how Spin Tops have evolved over thousands of years to become a multi-billion dollar product. That's million with a B. With over 500 million Beyblades manufactured to date and an average price of $15 for each Bay. That's roughly $7.5 billion in revenue worldwide. And that is why there are so many variations of them. And of course, the countless fakes you can easily buy. This video is sponsored by Bayi, but more on them coming up. In modern times, battling tops, as they were first called, date back to the late 60s if we could even call that modern. And we're flimsy little spin tops that in all fairness would get wrecked by modern Beyblades. Anyways, when the original Star Wars movie was released, they rebranded and were renamed as battling spaceships, but were equally as bad. <laughs> God, imagine if Beyblades had Star Wars avatars? The f***? More recently, we have the not so well known Spin Fighters. No, no, not these guys yet. These are like the Metal Series Beyblades, but not as big or fun. These Spin Tops were released by Bandai in 1990 and featured Street Fighter characters' pictures on them. Later in 1994, they featured popular wrestlers and the still very popular Power Rangers on the face of the tops and came with a one hand launcher. And we all know how bad one hand bay launchers are. And believe me, these are no different. You can learn more about them in this video from the channel Peg Warmers. They've allowed me to use some of their footage and you can find their link in the description below. These spin top launchers kind of resemble the Power Rangers morphing tools, which I guess is kind of cool if you're into it. I'm not a fan of Power Rangers anymore, so eh. Now they came with a stadium that actually resembles the A5 base stadium to battle in. But as much as you'd like to call yourself a collector, there are other people who use spin tops religiously. Now some of you watching may already know of the dreidel. This is called a dreidel. You spin it and see where it lands, and you sing this song. This is a spin top used in the Jewish religion and is usually spun while celebrating Hanukkah. But spin tops have been used for fun and even gambling around the world. In India, the Latu is a spinning top most kids may not even use anymore since the rise of the smartphone. In Japan, the Koma is still a very popular spinning top for battles and cultural practices in the Shinto ceremonies. And you know, many Asian countries hold competitions and have variations of spin top activities like this penge from Korea, which I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but it doesn't have a ripcord or launcher, but instead you have to keep hitting the spin top. That's completely different than what we have to do. And we also have gassing from Malaysia, Indonesia, and Singapore, which is basically competitive spin top battles. In ancient China, people were known to use spin tops made of ivory and were spun with a string. But these spin tops are nothing like the ones we use now with metal and plastic. These early spin tops were made of stone, clay, or wood and were launched with a string. So you can imagine that these bad boys were bootlegged as f and I think they would really hurt if they were to burst. But luckily, most of them were a one-piece construction, even for battle. The evolution into Beyblades themselves has taken nearly 200 years. There have been earlier spin tops here in North America made with plastic and metal, like this one. The biggest change in spin top design was of course introduced with the invention of Beyblades as a competitive toy, which includes many interchangeable parts. What came first, the toy or the manga? While some videos claim that Mr. Mr. Takao Aoki was the creator of Beyblade. They're mistaken in 
in thinking he came up with the toy and mechanism itself. Long before the manga, TV shows, and video games, Mr. Osamu Mashimo was developing products for Japan's Takura Tommy, including Transformers, Beatamon, and of course, Battling Tops. Mashimo is the legend of Beyblade. He developed and helped patent the original Beyblade designs, later having Takao Aoki develop a storyline and characters. Surprisingly, the manga didn't do great in sales, but once Mashimo pushed for a TV series, both manga and Beyblade sales began to take off. <laughs> so much so that two decades later, I'm still here talking about Beyblades along with many other people who love the hobby turned sport. In the beginning, there were various competitors to Beyblade like Rumble Rippers, Cyclonians, Spinjas, and many more that were released around and after the 2000s. Most of these spin tops aren't around anymore, getting beat by the first Beyblade's popularity. This is when the first Dragoon Beyblade was released, named Ultimate Dragoon, later renamed by Hasbro as Spin Dragoon. Takura Tommy introduced a manga, a Game Boy game, and a TV show to entice kids and their parents to buy Beyblades. And did you know that before the Beyblade Burst app, Beyblade and Transformers had already been in a collaboration? Yeah, Optimus Prime and Tyson Granger from the first season of Beyblade get to fight each other in this epic game, which I've also linked in the original video in the description. These were the first Beyblades made mostly of metal contact points with interchangeable parts and it quickly became popular among children and teens. They're now enjoyed worldwide by adults and teens teens alike. The toy line was accompanied by the TV show Beyblade Metal Fusion, which aired on Cartoon Network and has seen competition. The less popular show Spin Fighters, which is not at all related to the Bandai Power Rangers Spin Tops, was released after the Metal Fusion's big success. And that isn't the only knockoff. There are a couple more that I have found on YouTube itself. Over the years, Beyblades have continued to evolve and expand their gimmicks, especially with the addition of the Burst technology, which allows Beyblades to break apart during battles. They've also had unsuccessful spin-offs like the Bay Raiders or Bay Wheels. But despite the failures, Beyblade has become a cultural phenomenon with fans all over the world participating in tournaments and competitions to determine the best blader. Its newest rendition is Beyblade X, which is being marketed as a sport rather than a hobby or a kid's toy. It will shape the future of spin top battles with yet to be seen features that combine all previous generations most popular attributes. Now a big thank you to Bai for sponsoring this video. Bai is a proxy service which allows you to buy products straight from Japan, whether it's Beyblades, Pokemon cards, or manga, even if you're using Amazon Japan, Yahoo Japan, and even Toys R Us Japan. You can rest assured that you can find it all through Bai, available in about a hundred countries. From its roots a thousand years ago to the humble beginnings of Beyblades in 1999, spin tops have grown into a global phenomenon with a dedicated and passionate fan base. Today, spin tops continue to be popular for collecting and competitors around the world, with competitions being held in many countries. Who knows what the future holds for Beyblade, but one thing is certain, it's here to stay, and I'll be here to see it through. It's so amazing.